brief as I can uh, on the grounds that they're overrunning. And we'll, I, I don't think we're going to catch up to 15 minutes, but I'll do the best I can. Um, we've been, we have been here for a long while. Um, I've been here almost the beginning, but not quite. We used to brand ourselves as, as, as a Halton Chemical Industry Museum, and it, it soon became evident. In, in that phrase, there were a couple of words that we should have been seen together under any circumstances. Um, firstly, uh, well, to, to make a point, chemical and museum do not go well together. <laughs> Although those, the, the, the observant amongst you will have seen road signs still saying chemical museum, um, which is something over the passage of time we hope to um, uh, erase. <coughs> do, do you remember an advertisement for the VA? It said, it said, um, no, at Ace Cafe, quite a nice museum attached. <laughs> that reflects yeah. the relationship that Catalyst, um, the museum has with Catalyst, the science centre. It's an Ace Museum with a nice science centre, or part of the other way around, I don't know. Anyway, to the collection. Um, uh, I feel almost I should say Robin at that point. We're, we're getting along. Right. Sig significant items. Uh, and if, any, if I seem shocked at the appearance of any of these slides, it's like I looked together about an hour ago, so uh, your surprise will be equal to my surprise. Um, we have the ICI General Chemicals Group Research Archive. Um, it came to us 10 years ago. Um, Brian Hollows, um, one of our friends, brought it, well, not even brought it, he arranged it from ICI's heat um, laboratory when it was closing down. And um, oh, this is the best bit. It was listed as eight to ten thousand. Here you are, here comes this transit van, it's not a big thing, but it's got and here comes another one. <laughs> they came. Two of them all were on the same van twice, but this large collection of dead boxes. Um, we thought that's fine, we're gonna walk our way through it. In fact, John the archive volunteer who has been here for at least um, at least ten years now. Um, when these things came along, um, he started to work two days a week. That'll, that'll get it done in, 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 in a year or so. That, that wasn't the problem. Now, the, difficult, the difficulty is that um, in, uh, in the fullness of time, the true magnitude of the task became um, evident. Um, we now have listed, and everything, as I can say now, like everything is available online. It's one of the beauties of the that everything you've done is available for everyone to look at. If you go to the collections and the historical documentation page on our website, like that, and that, you will see everything of significance listed, with the whole collection listed and, and the ICI Journal Country Research Archive as well. Um, there are now 2,000, sorry, I'll try again, 25,356 items. And we're discovering more all the time. It's fixed after 10 years. But every time you go through it, uh, two papers from the war that have stuck together, being, being uh, as thin as a fellow prize wing uh, and um, a bit tacky, you pull that, you've got, you've got, then you have to have 25,357. And the process goes on. So um, the first one is dated the 3rd of December. In, in, in the year 1900, and the last one it says here, because I wrote it down, 24th of March 1998. Realistically speaking, the best parts of the collection are from 1930 until 1964. Uh, between those dates, we have a, comprehensive, a fairly comprehensive list. Unfortunately, this is to my attention, that it's been sanitized a bit. And there must have been things of which they were slightly embarrassed, and I suspect a lot of them actually with what they did in the war, um, and um, I suspect they are embarrassed about having worked in, in, in the atomic bomb. Um, it does make a difference because they didn't know half of what was in it, in fact they didn't know two thirds of what was here. So quite frankly, there is a lot of material about what the police call X-metal. Um, and, <coughs> sorry, <laughs> I'm getting carried away. An absolute gem. It is, if you're interested in chemistry and chemical industry. Um, X metal is one of the highlights, um, and it, it really is quite significant. Be before the whole thing became sort of a transnational project and disappeared off to Oak Ridge, uh, a lot of work. I said I was a natural choice for this kind of work because they were very keen on, on, on chlorine fluid chemistry and worked with it uh, for many, many years. They 
Um, are, there are other things. Uh, if you think about um, the, I don't know, the introduction of hay to um, a lovely, lovely, a lovely, lovely material. Um, it was it, it was the one first. Well, well, the form was certainly the first anaesthetic that was produced by by a direct from first principles application of chemistry. Um, and just as, as we talk about anything, you probably, probably unfortunately, because of the size of that fish, won't be able to read the gentleman's name. But on the second last row of that uh, of that um, that list, um, it being the, the, the large list of names, the gentleman called Charles Suckling, and he was credited very much with the introduction of the the synthesis and, and introduction of anything. Um, this is just an example of a spreadsheet. I, I can't see what cell we're up to, not even put my glasses on. But um, that looks like about 22,000 out of the 25,000 there. So we're in, we're, in, we're in 1961 at this point. So Charles Suckling is down there as, as, um, as a recipient of the papers. And this whole thing has been uh, is, 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 is complete essential. Now you go to our website, you search that spreadsheet for anything a name, a product, a, a process. A factory, a date, you will you will find the information that you want. Um, if you yourself were in the habit of writing papers during this period, um, or your, your your relatives were, or people you know were, <coughs> this is the place. If they're anyway connected with the Northwest of England, this is the place to come for information. Um, uh, and I, I pick out Charles Sutton because it's very, it's, very um, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing to be proud of about Williams. People, some people sometimes ask what happened in Williams. Well, Paul Simon wrote um, Home Bound. He doesn't have it anymore, but he did, probably, possibly. Um, and then we did the X-Method stuff, which is lovely, but not something we like to talk about in quite company. And then there's Halo Fame, which in the, from 1960 something onwards made a really big difference for 20 years. So we did talk about Halo Fame and Charles Suckling, and if everybody knows the blue plaque on the front of the building, that's a celebration of. of, of, of um, of, of that particular that particular idea, or everything about halothane, all the all the description, all the work is in this is in this archive. Um, you just have to search occasionally sort of uh, through a thing or, or alternative alternative ways of looking at it. But I think, so we are very pleased with this. It, it, it is very comprehensive. It is thoroughly um, thoroughly looked at. If you consider a similar thing was done in Teesside for Billingham. As that there was a committee, a committee of the great and the good went, went through it and said, ah, oh, this is interesting, it's paint, we'll give that to slap, oh, this is interesting, it moves as well. So the whole thing was segregated into, a, into a, several pieces. Uh, and that's, um, but we do have the first of the pretend tea site, what you might what was once described by Akira, is a grey list. So if you're interested in things at the tea site, we have a list there as well, because we asked them what they had, and they kind of send us spreadsheets of things. So not only do we have our own list, we have a list for, um, of the stuff at Teesside as well, which is uh, uh, equally interesting. Now that book comes next. Right, so go and read it. Download it from our website, as, as you can for everything we discussed today. Right, so that is the, that is the jewel in the crown. The, the, um, the, whole, the whole archive room glows pink for the colour of the boxes you just saw us. Um, we very rashly said we stuck it on top of the existing shelf and it two layers deep. Step by required in that case. Right, ICI magazine. We've got a reason. Our, 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 our copy of this region is comprehensive. Um, we would really like a few more of the um, regional supplements. Um, I, 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 I put this in, not that it's, it's, it's not even slightly legible, but each one of those blocks of colour is a different, um, a different ICI regional supplement. Um, for example, we in the 1950s, they, they what they did was they took the they took the supplements and they had a, a rush of binding whereby just about all the regional supplements were bound into what volumes that were about four and a half five inches thick. Um, other years we would very much like to get our hands on. I mean, uh, where we're going to have a look, the bottom, the, the, the top of plastics division, not <coughs> the yellow, which is plastic, happened to be leather cloth, which was in hide. And it had a magazine called Leather Cloth Reporter. We don't have any there, to mind. Um, we would like some more. Grains of salt for salt division. Limestone shipping, this was limestone division. <laughs> and on, and on, and on. And hexagon courier, I rather like. Because um, that, that was the that was that was Blakely. Um, and that was quite imaginative. 
a metal thermometer, not. <laughs> so we like, we're, we're pretty good at these kinds of things, especially some of the regional supplements which are not available elsewhere. The magazine itself, that often the library's a record, and the, the regional supplements did not. So if anyone knows of vast quantities of unwanted regional supplements, especially from the northwest of England, um, we would like them. The list of our regional supplements and everything else that we've got in connection with the ICI publications is on the website. We have a large part of the ICI Western Point Photo Archive by a local historical society. There are a lot of items. The number is not, is not entirely certain, but we are, one of our volunteers, uh, Billy, is, is scanning them. And just to give you a flavour of what's available, this also, by the way, is sanitised by the persons, actually the person in this case, who quite is known and should have known better, in my opinion. Um, but there you go. Um, and that is sometime in the 1960s, and um, I myself would have gone to parties exactly the same as that, except mine would have been the USAC Christmas party with Uncle Blood. Hutchinson um, <laughs> Dock Estate, Union Trust, all the area, all of the area on this side, a few bits and pieces here, everything on the far side of the road, railway bios, and a few things on this side. Um, John Hutchinson leased his first factory in 1847. Um, he was a chemical entrepreneur that made a sense. He didn't want to build a factory and make, and make profit. He wanted to build a factory, buy buy all the land, build an industrial estate. Um, he was very successful, got TB, which, which cut short his life. Um, but his estate lived on. I mean, unfortunately, he had to carry the burden of Hutchinson's family in the terms of his will. The girls were fine. The little boy was fine. He was fine. And then there was Jack, John Junior, Jack. If there ever was an archetypal Victorian black sheep of the family, that was said. Jack could be relied on to do absolutely the wrong thing. Jack could be relied, relied upon to spend the money he didn't have, and then the estate would have to sort out the consequences of actually, of actually settling up with those people who he promised his fortune. Because when he got to 25, he got Tom Trotter the factory. Big mistake. So the trustees, there was a cousin, the solicitor, and the man who ran the dog estate. They, they, were, they were, went back to the Court of Chancery and said, um, um, well, we can't let this happen. And, and in fact, that's what, that's what didn't happen. And um, Jack thought he'd be, in the end, he went to the Mountain, he went to Canada, came back in disgrace. Thought he'd try the Cape Mountain Police, he went to, he went to the Cape and died. Um, in disgrace, presumably. Uh, I don't know. Um, what do we really have? All those things are. Um, I, I do like the leases to green books, but the house I live in was once owned by the trustees of. Or rather, the land on which it was built it was, it was, it was, it was owned. Um, we get, with the letterbox, it's lovely, you get half the story. For example, you get uh, Major Cross writing to someone saying, Jack, we shouldn't have done that, or writing to Jack saying, I'm sorry, Jack, you had your last one, you may not have any more. And it, it's really, really interesting to read. It, it gives a, a, a one sided snapshot of what it was actually like trying to run an industrial enterprise um, in, during this period. Other things that coming up now. Um, Peter Spence's lab books from 1859, after, after the, I believe it's after Peter, after the famous, um, the famous pollution problem, yes. Yeah. Um, he had a partner, and his partner, his partner didn't get on. And he introduced a word to me that was new to me in one of these books. Um, translations, by the way, are available on the website. He introduced a, a, a word, defalcation. Now then, I had a little bit of an addiction. Would anyone who understands defalcation care to raise that? Thieving. Yes, I'm pretty much right. Um, he, well, anyway, anyway he, accused, he accused his partner of defalcation very, very shortly afterwards they were no longer partners. Interestingly, the only person that's really showing the interest is a direct uh, descendant of a partner. Uh, who presumably was somewhat discomfited to find his ancestor called call for defalcation. Towers. <laughs> Towers made laboratory equipment and um, turned into gun caps and then turned into bisons, I think, and then, and then just disappeared off the face of the earth uh, as lab equipment came from elsewhere. A big employer, especially of women, especially um, for producing glassware. There are some lovely pictures of them. I mean, it's a bit like sort of Rosie de Glassblower. Um, Serried ranks of women behind desks blowing, blowing glassware uh, to the heart's content. Um, lovely local company, best, best known, and we have quite a lot of correspondence. They were, for example, that they were forced to relocate from Central Britain during the Second World War. We could have thought that Britain would be heavily bombed. So they went to Huff Green, which is about three miles away on the ground. They lost that, possibly find Huff Green from, from Central 
witness. Um, so they are also notorious or famous for the first appearance of Ken Dodd in witness. <laughs> <laughs> they, had a, they, had a company, they had a company anniversary, upcoming liberal comic Ken Dodd came along. Ken Dodd was familiar, I've been mean, Matty, he was familiar with witness because uh, he, we used to come to Ditton Road to buy things for cleaning, and presumably the last ones chlorinated stuff. Um, Clay Nelly Company, nobody else wanted their stuff, they hadn't talked to Manchester, and Manchester did come back to them, so we went there and we got quite a lot of items. Salary books and, and wages books, 1885 to 1915. Um, lots and lots of plans of the place. Um, if you want to know what they made and where they made it, we've got that information. If you want to know who was there during that period, we've got that information. Um, right, occupational health and health standards. One day, mysteriously, someone came along with a big, with a big box of files and said, I found some fine cabinet down in Pilts. I'm not supposed to bring it to you, but I'll give it to you anonymously. It was very, very interesting. And we took it. It was a, a record of accidents, I said, that sort of works, from the 1930s until after the Second World War. And it really is a uh, fascinating stuff. We've actually got it on a day, we've actually got it. It's not on the web, it's not on the, uh, the website where we actually have it. But it is available for people um, in, in, in gruesome detail who, who, who feel the need. <laughs> um, you know, it, I mean, it's really funny that because it's mostly slips and trips. So and so tripped over a rail in the works, put his hand out, broke his arm. So and so fell into, fell into something horrible and died horribly. And that's the, that's, that's the, the, the range of that's the range of accidents. Most of it trivial and mundane, but occasionally they're, they're, they're quite gruesome. And then there's the other little thing like so and so plays rugby league for Willie, so we'll let him off with a bit more time. <laughs> <laughs> or he got hurt playing, something like that. Um, Bios reports. The British Electoral Committee Subcommittee um, went went through a journey like those assaults after, after the, the, the Second World War, making um, reports on every kind of chemical enterprise, a real kind of enterprise that's known to man. Um, we rather like them, though a lot of people actually don't, because they're considered a nuisance and clogging, clogging up their institutions. Um, I'll give you a flavour of it. I think the, 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 it says, and if you're into it, and this thing, again, this is searchable on the internet, um, so, um, although not the entire list of these things, fortunately. Um, Research report on benzyl chloride, xylylene chloride, triethylamine, triethylamine fatty acid esters, and methylacetophenol. There you go. So if you're interested in that kind of topic in, the study in Germany during the Second World War, this is the place to come and get it. Um, we've had, I think, possibly two requests for this material uh, since it was um, since it was got. Um, one from America, one from America. These things were available for two shillings from HMSO when they were new. People pay us sums of money to take to actually read them now. Certainly commercial, um, commercial researchers will do. What else have we got? New things. Material from the basement of Mond House. Well, Mond House is, is, is about to be raised around from the Mond off out of Wellington um, to back, back to Lost Rock Graven with um, huge irony. Um, we've been there and taken what material we thought was interesting. Um, it is not yet thoroughly catalogued. Please be aware that, that we do have something. Neural archive material, Diana will expand on this. Uh, well, uh, well, I did say something a little earlier because it's Sue's father's material. Diana has already expanded on this. Yes, so I did. So, so I no did, more expansion is required. Well, I did explain. Um, Which is why you repeated. It's okay. really to do with um, Wing Island, etc. And, and actually, I'll finish that.